Pete is an anthropomorphic cartoon character created in 1925 by Walt Disney and Dubai Works. He is a character of the Walt Disney Company and often appears as a nemesis and the main antagonist in Mickey Mouse Universe stories. He was originally an anthropomorphic bear but with the advent of Mickey Mouse in 1928, he was defined as a cat. Pete is the oldest continuing Disney character, having debuted three years before Mickey Mouse in the cartoon Alice Solves the Puzzle. Pete has appeared in more than 40 animated short films between 1925 and 1954, having been featured in the Alice comedies in Oswald the Lucky Rabbit cartoons, and later in the Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy cartoons. Pete's final appearance during this era was The Lone Chipmunks, which was the final installment of a three-part Chip and Dale series. He also appeared in the short films Mickey's Christmas Carol, The Prince and the Pauper, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, The Three Musketeers, and Get a Horse. Pete has also made many appearances in Disney comics, and often appeared as Sylvester Scheister's dim-witted sidekick in the Mickey Mouse comic strip. In the Italian comic production he has come to be the central character in comics from time to time. Pete later made several appearances in television, most extensively in Goof Troop where he was given more continuity, having a family and a regular job as a used car salesman. Pete also appears in House of Mouse as the greedy property owner who's always trying devious ways and loopholes to get the club shut down. Although Pete is often typecast as a villain, he has shown great versatility within the role, playing everything from a hardened criminal to a legitimate authority figure, and from a menacing troublemaker to a victim of mischief himself. On some occasions, Pete has even played a sympathetic character, all the while maintaining his underlying menacing nature. He seems to have lost much of his antagonistic demeanor in his Mickey Mouse Clubhouse appearances and is today a largely friendly character, although his antics can occasionally prove an annoyance. Ancestry and Family Comic book stories have depicted Pete as being descended from a long line of villains, highwaymen and outlaws. Even historical figures such as Attila the Hun, Blackbeard, and Antonio La Cube de Pez de Santa Ana, Billy the Kid, and Cow Cow have been included among his ancestors. His mother is known only as Moor Pete and was mentioned in the story Donald Duck Finds Pirate Gold by Carl Barks and Jack Hanna as a resident of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, USA. Her first actual appearance however was in The River Pirates by Carl Fulberg and Paul Murray. The same story introduced Lyle Pete, Black Pete's fraternal twin brother who seems to be afflicted with dwarfism. In December 1998, the Mickey Mouse comic strip introduced an older sister of Pete. Petula is the television host of the cooking show Petula's Pantry. She finds time, however, to seek revenge against Mickey for condemning her baby brother to life imprisonment. Better known and more enduring as characters are two figures created by Romano Scarpa for Italian Disney comics. Trudy Van Tarb appeared first, and was introduced in Topolino e la Calana Shirakawa. This female partner of Pete was introduced as a childhood acquaintance of his, they are even shown as kids kidnapping Mickey when he was a baby. However, Trudy soon became Pete's girlfriend, his partner in crime and roommate a Euro, whenever they hold residence out of prison, that is. Their relationship seems to have evolved to a long-standing common-law marriage. This is occasionally used in contrast to Mickey's eternal engagement to Minnie Mouse and Goofy's determination to remain a bachelor. Trudy and Pete also have two Hellion nephews named Pirino and Pyretto who often serve as foils for Mickey or Mickey's nephews Morty and Ferdy Field Mouse. The second cousin to be introduced was criminal scientist Portis. Portis first appeared in Topolino e il Pippo Lupo. Portis is a firm believer in the saying knowledge is power. He considers himself superior to most others in both intellect and education, therefore a rightful leader. However, Portis often finds himself employed by gangs under Pete or even the Phantom Blot. Both of the latter are considered better connected within the Mouston version of organized crime. In Mickey Mouse Works, Pete has another cousin named Zek. Zek is a criminal like Pete, but is wary of his cousin's attempts to double-cross him just like old times. Mickey often uses this distrust to turn the two against one another. In Goof Troop, Pete has a wife, Peg, and two children. PJ and Pistol. 
Alternatively, the comic book story Mickey's Strange Mission from Walt Disney's Comics and Stories No. 245 suggests a cultured ancestry for Pete, giving his full name as the genteel Percy P. Percival. In the Italian comic story of 1998, Topolino e il diario di Zia Topolinda we meet Pete's grandma, depicted as the only honest member of his family. Theatrical cartoons. Equals Alice comedies equals, Pete first appeared in the Walt Disney produced 1920s Alice comedies short subject series. He first appeared in Alice Solves the Puzzle as Bootleg Pete. His nickname is a reference to his career of bootlegging alcoholic beverages during the United States Prohibition. His activities brought him at a beach in time to see Alice playing with a crossword puzzle. Pete happened to be a collector of crossword puzzles and identified Alice's puzzle being a rare one missing from his collection. The rest of the short focused on his antagonizing Alice and her drunk on moonshine cat Julius in order to steal it. The menacing, bare villain commanded quite a presence on the screen and was destined to return. In Alice Wins the Derby Pete Alice and Julius are among several contestants in a combined horse racing auto racing event. Pete first demonstrates his skill at cheating on sporting events to achieve victory. However, a car accident takes both Pete and Julius out of the race. The ending is given away by the title of the short. In Alice's stage struck Pete is cast as the stuff of nightmares for little Alice. She is depicted performing a stage version of Uncle Tom's Cabin with her live-action friends when she falls unconscious. In her nightmare, Alice is being chased by Pete and his dog sled across an Arctic environment. In Alice Picks the Champ, Pete is depicted as the owner of a gym who challenges all who enter in a boxing fight. The invitation is extended to Julius upon his entry. Despite the title Alice is a mere spectator in their fight rather than playing a more active role. Pete made his final appearance for the year in Alice's Tin Pony. The pony of the title was actually a train transporting passengers Alice and Julius along with a payroll shipment. The shipment attracts the attention of Pete the Bear, and his gang of outlaws who attempt a train robbery. This was the first time Pete was depicted as leader of his own gang rather than a solitary villain. This depiction would prevail in his comic book appearances for decades. In Alice on the Farm, Pete performs his first act of kidnapping. He abducts Alice from a farm early on the short. Pete places her in a bag, punches her out and gives his own, silent version of an evil laugh. Julius then has to rescue his female friend in a duel. Arguably the first of many duels Pete would have in his long career. Notably both Pete and Julius received more screen time than Alice herself. Pete received a darker role in Alice's mysterious mystery. The title mystery concerns the abduction of an entire school of puppies by two mysterious dog catchers. Amateur detectives Alice and Julius investigate the case. The trail leads to Pete and an unnamed anthropomorphic rat serving as his henchman. The duo had abducted the puppies to sell them to a local sausage factory. Arguably establishing Pete is more ruthless than a mere kidnapper. Pete upstaged Alice again in Alice's Balloon Race where said Balloon Race serves as an excuse for another confrontation between Julius and his archenemy. Alice served as a bit player in her own film. In Alice's Spanish Guitar, Pete listens to Alice playing guitar in the Spanish cafe copyright. Pete is charmed by her music and abducts the girl once again. He keeps her captive in his own castle. Julius once again has to save the damsel in distress. Alice's Brown Derby depicts a horse racing contest where Pete attempts to cheat again while Julius rides a mechanical horse. Alice the Lumberjack, finds Alice and Julius working as lumberjacks. Pete interrupts their work to abduct Alice again. Julius is forced to come to the rescue once again. Both shorts can be seen as evidence of the repetition of plot themes that plagued the series as it progressed. Alice the Gold Bug had Alice. Julius and Pete competing against each other in a surreal golf game. Alice Foils the Pirates has a misleading title. Actually the short features Pete holding Alice hostage in a pirate ship while Julius comes to the rescue. Pete would later be cast as an experienced captain and occasional pirate in his comic strip, Mickey Mouse Works, and comic book appearances. Alice at the Rodeo features Alice and Julius in a rodeo.
Alice rides a bull which has little trouble throwing the little girl off his back. Julius proves more successful in bronc riding and wins first prize. But it is Pete who escapes with his winnings. This naturally leads to another confrontation between the two rivals. Alice in the Alps indeed has Alice and Julius ice skating in the Alps. They encounter Pete while mountaineering. Alice's auto race actually features Julius and Pete competing in their usual style. Alice's naughty night features Julius and Peter's knights in armor fighting over the affections of Lady Alice. Alice's channel swim has Julius and Pete competing in a swimming race across the English Channel. Alice was actually the referee rather than a swimmer. Alice in the Klondike has Alice and Julius as gold prospectors in Klondike, Yukon, Canada. Their successful search attracts their old rival Pete who wants the gold for himself. This would be the final appearance of Pete in the series. The series would have four more entries, ending with Alice in the Big League on August 22, 1927. Pete would be the only character of the series to survive its ending. Equals Oswald the Lucky Rabbit equals, when Disney needed a villain to place against his new star Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, Pete was again put to good use. His introduction to his new adversary came with the sixth Oswald short The Ocean Hop. Apparently inspired by Charles Lindbergh, the two enter an aeroplane race across the Atlantic Ocean. Hugh Harmon and Rollin Hamilton were responsible for animating several inventive gags during the film. At least one became a classic. At some point Oswald runs off a cliff and continues to walk on air without the effect of gravity until realizing there is no ground to stand on. The gag would be reused in many cartoon shorts to come. One should note that Charles Lindbergh also served as the inspiration for Plain Crazy, the first cartoon to feature Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. The banker's daughter gave a more characteristic depiction of Oswald. Oswald was working as a limousine driver for a banker, but is quickly fired for flirting with the daughter of his employer. When Pete performs his first bank robbery at the same bank, Oswald comes to the rescue in order to become a hero. This is the first appearance of Oswald's cat love interest, replacing Oswald's former love interest Miss Cottontail who would never appear again in the Disney shorts. Rickety Jin features Pete in a more comedic and romantic role. Oswald appears as a police officer who uses his fancy uniform to romance an unnamed young nurse. Pete succeeds at getting the officer drunk and proceeds in stealing his uniform and romancing the nurse himself. Apparently, the lady was attracted to uniform-wearing men. Harim Skarim features Pete and Oswald in Morocco. Oswald falls in love with a dancer and Pete abducts her, leading to another heroic rescue for Oswald. Rival Romeos features Pete and Oswald as rivals for the heart of their lady love. However, both Romeos and their automobiles were at the end rejected by their Juliet in favor of an unnamed dog and his motorcycle. Sagebrush Sadie features Oswald as a cowboy attempting to save a stagecoach and its female passenger from outlaw Pete. Ozzy of the Mounted casts Pete as Foxy Wolf, an outlaw wanted by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Oswald was naturally positioned as the Mountie determined to get his man. The chase goes on through a series of Canadian locales. One should note that Foxy is only named as such in the film's production materials. In the film as released, he is Pegleg Pete. The use of the name Foxy, in any respect, has no known connection to Foxy, the namesake character of the later Merry Melodies series. Oh, what a night is somewhat unusual. The action takes place not in the 1920s, but in the Middle Ages. Pete is a strict father who keeps his daughter in isolation within their family castle. Oswald is the potential lover of the girl who is trying to release her. Oswald duels with Pete and then uses an anachronistic bowling ball to take out his men. He makes his escape with the girl, only to be confronted by the final defense of a hostile lion. The two lovers escape the castle using a parachute and kiss as they make their fall. The use of the parachute presumably places the events after its first recorded use by Armand Furman. Skyscrapers casts Pete as another kind of villain not an outlaw, but a harsh superior in a working environment. In this case, the movie takes place at a construction site, where Oswald is a steel worker and Pete his supervising foreman. 
a working relationship then only deteriorates when both men are interested in a cat love interest by the name of Sadie. Hungry Hobo saw the duo having been reduced to hobos seeking rail transport. On the plus side, the two old rivals had apparently achieved friendship. By the time producer Charles Mintz took away the Oswald series from Disney, Pete had been established as the most consistently appearing supporting character to Oswald. He continued to appear in that role in the Oswald films directed and produced by Walter Lance until 1933. His most notable non-Disney appearance was arguably as a captain in Permanent Wave. Equals Mickey Mouse equals. Animation historian David Gstein speculates that when Disney stopped working on the Oswald cartoons for Universal he separated from the character and this cast including Pete. Disney and this team created a cat villain for their new protagonist Mickey Mouse. Originally called Terrible Tom, the villain was named Pegleg Pete by 1930 as the Disney crew felt that he was essentially a continuation of their earlier villain, albeit a different species. Pete appeared as Mickey's enemy beginning with the cartoons The Gallopin' Gaucho and Steamboat Willie. In the cartoons of the 1930s, Pete would be Mickey Mouse's nemesis, but would vary in professions, from an all-out outlaw to a brutal law enforcer. On the other hand, Pete is seen in the audience in the 1932 Mickey's Review in which the antagonist is not Pete but Dippy D.A.W.G. also known as Goofy. In the 1942 cartoon Symphony Hour, Pete is a sympathetic impresario who sponsors Mickey's orchestra in a concert, which goes terribly wrong, but is a great success. Animator Norm Ferguson developed Pete's character in several shorts. In addition, Pete is featured in the following Mickey Mouse cartoons, The Barn Dance, The Barnyard Battle, The Cactus Kid, The Chain Gang, Traffic Troubles, The Mad Dog, Barnyard Olympics, Mickey in Arabia, Touchdown Mickey, The Klondike Kid. Building a Building, The Male Pilot, Mickey's Gala Premier, Shanghai, The Dog Napper, Two Gun Mickey, Mickey's Service Station, Moving Day, The Worm Turns, Mickey's Amateurs, Mr. Mouse Takes a Trip and Symphony Hour. Equals Donald Duck equals, Pete is a featured character in the following Donald Duck cartoons, Donald's Lucky Day, Officer Duck, The Riveter, Timber, Donald Gets Drafted, The Vanishing Private, Sky Trooper. Bellboy Donald, The Old Army Game, Trombone Trouble, The New Neighbor and Canvas Back Duck. Equals Goofy Equals, Pete only appears in three Goofy cartoons, Two Gun Goofy, How to Be a Detective, and Father's Day Off. He appears in Goof Troop, a Goofy movie and its sequel an extremely Goofy movie. Equals Chip and Dale Equals, Pete only appears in one Chip and Dale cartoon, The Lone Chipmunks. World War II. During World War II, Pete was drafted by Walt Disney and appeared as the official mascot of the United States Merchant Marine. He appeared in Donald Duck's series of army films where he plays Donald's drill sergeant and later sergeant and jump master. In the comic strips he was a spy for Nazi Germany as Mickey discovered in Mickey Mouse on a secret mission his motivation being the money. Comics, in comic strips and comic books, Pete is consistently depicted as a hardened criminal. In the 1943 comic strip story Mickey Mouse on a Secret Mission, he was an agent of Nazi Germany, working as the henchman of Gestapo spy von Weasel. In the 1950 comic strip story The Moot Treasure, he's even portrayed as the barrier like deputy chief of intelligence in a totalitarian state on the other side of the Iron Curtain. Pete often teams up with Mickey Mouse enemy Sylvester Shyster, Eli Squinch, or the Phantom Blot. In earlier comic strips, starting with Mickey Mouse in Death Valley Pete was portrayed as Sylvester Shyster's henchman, but he gradually started to work on his own. Sometimes, Pete also teams up with other bad guys in the Disney universe, such as Scrooge McDuck's enemies, Mad Madame Mim, Captain Hook, and the Evil Queen. In Italian comics, his girlfriend Trudy is his frequent partner in crime. His cousin the mad scientist Plotgat is another, less frequent, accomplice. In his earlier comic strip appearances, Pete sported a knee hyperg leg, which was later reduced to a foot high prosthesis. In Mickey Mouse in Death Valley, Floyd Gottfredson occasionally committed goofs, with the pug leg switching from Pete's right leg to his left one. 
In Godfredson's story The Mystery at Hidden River, the pig leg disappeared, with Pete having two normal legs. When Mickey expressed surprise at this, Pete described one of his legs as a new, streamlined, modern artificial leg. Pete has since been consistently depicted as having two legs. Except in the 2004 feature film Mickey, Donald, Goofy, The Three Musketeers. His name in Italy has remained Pietro Gambadilligno, or simply Gambadilligno even though it has been a long time since he was actually depicted with a pig leg in either comics or animated cartoons. In an Italian story by Romano Scarpa, Topolino e la Dimension Delta, Pete briefly removes his artificial leg, revealing his old foot hyperleg underneath. Television equals DuckTales equals, in the first season of the 1987 TV series DuckTales, Pete appeared in a few episodes. However, he was portrayed as a different character in each of his appearances. Because of this, he wasn't always a true villain, but sometimes just a selfish individual with no evil agenda. In a few episodes, he even makes peace with Scrooge's group in the end. The various Pete's appear to be their own characters, as two of them lived in different time periods, and because Scrooge never recognizes him, despite any previous encounters he may have had with any of the other Pete's. In all of his appearances Pete was voiced by Will Ryan. Equals Goof Troop equals, in the 1992 TV series Goof Troop, Pete has a family who includes his wife Peg, their two children Pete Jr. and Pistol, and their dog Chainsaw with Pete taking on a more canine-like appearance. They live next door to Goofy and his son Max. In the series, Pete is the major antagonist and the main anti-hero. Pete is often a victim of Goofy's clumsiness and mishaps, usually resulting in the destruction of his property or great personal injury. Pete owns a used car dealership, and though no longer openly villainous, is still conniving and often exploits his good-hearted and somewhat adult friend Goofy. Often, his schemes backfire, or he feels guilty about his oafish behavior and works to set things right. His wife Peg often attempts to rid Pete of his uncouth attitude, and his son PJ is a complete opposite of his father in behavior as he is good friends with Goofy's son Max in the series and its spin-off movies A Goofy Movie and An Extremely Goofy Movie as a good character. Jim Cummings provided Pete's booming bass voice starting from that series, and to date is still the character's voice in all media. It is eventually revealed in the series pilot episode Forever Goof that one of the reasons why Pete dislikes Goofy so much is that when Pete was a high school quarterback in a big football game, it was Goofy who accidentally caused Pete to fumble the ball and lose the game by hitting him in the face with a pom-pom. Equals Mickey Mouse works and House of Mouse equals, after Goof Troop, Pete reverted to his evil ways on Mickey Mouse works, where he frequently bullied the other characters and occasionally kidnapped Minnie Mouse. He would also play an average criminal. Then in House of Mouse, he plays the role of the evil landlord. Several episodes involved his attempts to close the club by sabotaging the show, though there were times when he helped out the crew. Equals Mickey Mouse Clubhouse equals, Pete appears in numerous episodes of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Disney's newest 3D animated children's series. He maintains his protagonist and semi-antagonist role, but is significantly toned down for its preschool audience Euro he is less malicious and more mischievous. Viewers will find that Mickey and gang are very forgiving of Pete and his escapades. He often appears as a seller of objects the gang needs, and will give them an item in exchange for beans. He is much nicer than his previous incarnations a Euro in one episode, he invites the group to a Halloween party. In Pete's beach blanket lull, he even invites everyone to the titular party. While Clubhouse has a great deal of fun at Pete's expense, it also depicts him in a sympathetic light. He's openly sentimental in Claribel's Clubhouse Carnival, not wanting to part with his petty doll prizes. He even changes Baby Goofy's diaper in Goofy Baby. The Carnival episode also gives us the closest approximation of Pete's weight. He's shown to be the same size and weight as a brown bear. In Mickey's Great Clubhouse Hunt, he is the only character not invited to the Easter egg hunt, so he tries to gate crash, but messes up the secret word causing the clubhouse to float away. At the end, he apologizes and is invited to the egg hunt after all. He is also revealed as the owner of Butch the Bulldog, who is friends with Mickey's dog, 
Pluto. Equals Mickey Mouse equals, Pete appears in the new Mickey Mouse cartoon series. In the show, he is designed based on his appearances in the early Mickey Mouse cartoons, complete with a peg leg. Like Mickey Mouse works and House of Mouse, in the series he has revert to his evil ways, and again his booming bass voice provided by Jim Cummings. Movies, in the 1983 short film Mickey's Christmas Carol, an adaptation of Charles Dickens' novel A Christmas Carol featuring Disney characters, Pete was cast as the ghost of Christmas yet to come, who reveals himself by removing his hood and lighting a cigar, which also lights up the engraving on Scrooge's grave, and having only one line and laughing cruelly while Scrooge struggles to escape from his open grave as the gates of hell are opening. Pete also made a cameo appearance as a Toontown police officer in the very final scene of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He is viewed from the back, alongside Tom and Jerry's Spike and Horace Horser collar and security uniforms. This can be seen just before Porky Pig and Tinkerbell close the movie. This was a non-speaking role. Pete later appeared in a Goofy movie and its sequel where he was shown in a much lighter tone as these movies are based on Goof Troop. He was Goofy's best friend and confident in the films making him a minor character. However, he was still arrogant and somewhat grouchy. Equals The Prince and the Pauper Equals, in this Disney version of Mark Twain's The Prince and the Pauper, Pete once again played as the primary villain, this time as the English King's Captain of the Guard. When he saw that his ruler's life was slowly diminishing, he and his henchmen, a band of anthropomorphic weasels who now act as the King's Guards, seized the opportunity to terrorize England's citizens and rob them of their goods in favor of the king. After kicking out a disguised prince, whom he mistook for the peasant boy Mickey Mouse, out of his kingdom, he later receives word from one of his guards that the prince was seen a causing a commotion in the village, as the guard claimed that he acted like a nobleman and he had the royal ring. Pete suddenly realizes that it was indeed the prince he booted out, and seizes another opportunity out of this. That night, after the king passes away, Pete finds the phony prince, threatening the life of his dog, Pluto, unless Mickey follows his commands. In the village, he soon finds and captures the real prince and takes him to the castle's dungeon to lock him up. On the day of the prince's coronation, Pete plots to get Mickey crowned as king, though Mickey is still subservient to Pete's orders. His plan, however, is thwarted when the prince suddenly appears in the throne room having busted out of the dungeon and evading the guards with the help of Goofy and Donald Duck. A sudden battle in the throne room results in Pete's defeat, as Goofy's bumbling antics cause a chandelier to fall on the weasels, bundle them together, and send them rolling towards Pete. Pete, seeing this, tries to flee but is slowed down by his ripped-down pants and tripped by both the prince and Mickey, causing him to get rolled over and caught on the chandelier which sends him and his men rolling through a stained glass window and falling out of the castle. Equals Mickey's House of Villains equals, in the 2002 director video House of Mouse spin-off film Mickey's House of Villains, Pete and other Disney villains guest appearances from House of Mouse are featured. He takes part in the musical number It's Our House Now. Equals The Three Musketeers equals, in the 2004 made-for-video animated film The Three Musketeers. Pete again appeared under the name Peg Leg Pete. He served as the main antagonist of the film. Here, he was the captain of the Musketeers, aiming to take over France, with the help of his lieutenant, Clarable Cow, and the Beagle Boys. To do so, he must get Princess Minnie out of the way, but it proves to be difficult for him, even when he hires the film's titular trio to be her bodyguards, believing they won't do a good job protecting her. He received his own bad guy song, using the classic music piece in the Hall of the Mountain King. Video Game Appearances Equals Mickey Mouse a Capade equals, Pete appears as the captain of a pirate ship in the early NES Capsom game Mickey Mouse a Capade. Unlike most appearances, he is not the final boss in this game. Notably, his role here was exclusive to the game's American release. In the original Japanese version, the level's boss was Captain Hook from Peter Pan. Equals Mickey's Dangerous Chase equals, in the early Game Boy game Mickey's Dangerous Chase, Mickey has a present for Minnie, but Big Bad Pete steals it. To get it back, Mickey must chase him through several different zones. Pete is the final boss of the game. 
equals Adventures in the Magic Kingdom equals, in Adventures in the Magic Kingdom for the NES, Pete steals one of the keys needed to unlock the castle and challenges your character to a race on the Autopia attraction to get it back. Pete is only depicted in cut scenes, with the race itself more of a timed obstacle course featuring other cars with indistinct drivers. Equals Disney's Magical Quest equals, in Disney's Magical Quest, a trilogy by Capsom, Pete is the final boss of each game, personating a distinct ruler. He serves as an evil ruler who terrorizes the land he reigns and often kidnaps another character. In Disney's Magical Quest 1, he kidnaps Pluto. In Disney's Magical Quest 2, he appears as the tyrant Baron Pete, who commands the game's enemies. In Magical Quest 3, he kidnaps Donald's nephews. Mickey and, depending on the game, Minnie or Donald, are always set to defeat him. In the end of the first two games, when he is defeated, he simply disappears, but in Magical Quest 3, however, after being defeated by Mickey and Donald, he eventually surrenders and promises to become a good person. Equals Quickshot equals, Quickshot follows the adventures of Donald Duck as he, with the aid of his three nephews Huey, Dewey and Louie, sets out to obtain some treasure from a map he found. Pete appears as an antagonist near the end of the game, kidnapping Donald's nephews and demanding to be given the map, and must be fought immediately prior to the final stage and boss of the game. Equals Mickey Mania equals, Mickey Mania follows Mickey Mouse, who has been catapulted back in time to his earliest appearance in Steamboat Willie. Black Pete is Mickey's arch villain throughout the entire game, all the way from his very first confrontation against Mickey and Steamboat Willie all the way to his role in then recent 1990s The Prince and the Pauper. Equals Mickey's Speedway USA equals, in the racing game Mickey's Speedway USA, Pete is a heavyweight racer, but gets replaced when the player selects between Ludwig von Drake or Huey, Dewey and Louie. Equals Magical Tetris Challenge equals, Pete appears as the main antagonist in Magical Tetris Challenge. In the game, his goal is to obtain ultimate power from Donald's mysterious purple stone, having a weasel and the big bad wolf as his henchman. Equals Kingdom Hearts series equals. Pete is depicted as a recurring villain within the Kingdom Hearts video game series. He was originally a steamboat captain, with Mickey Mouse as his deck hand, and later the captain of the Royal Musketeers until his plans for a coup were foiled by Mickey. After Disney Castle was built in their world, with Mickey its new king, Pete began causing all sorts of mischief until he was banished to another dimension. He was subsequently freed by Maleficent, to whom he became indebted, and vowed to amass an army of heartless, creatures born from the darkness of people's hearts, to return the favor. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Prior to his service under Maleficent, Pete runs rampant through Disney Town during the world's annually held Dream Festival entering contests while shifting between two different alter egos a Euro superhero Captain Justice, and anti-hero Captain Dark a Euro in an attempt to claim the Million Dreams award for himself. He instead loses to one of the game's three protagonists and player characters, Terra, Aqua, and Ventus. Since his lack of consideration for the hearts of others is made apparent through his mischief, Pete is banished to another dimension by Queen Minnie until he can learn to behave. He is released from his imprisonment by Maleficent, however, and helps her conquer the various worlds in the series universe in return. Kingdom Hearts 358 2 Days Pete makes several appearances in Kingdom Hearts 358 2 Days, where he is gathering Heartless to build an army of Heartless for Maleficent. He is first seen exploring Agrabah in search of Jafer's magic lamp, but is secretly followed by Roxas and Axel of Organization 13 who are on a mission to collect hearts. Pete eventually uncovers a secret passage leading outside the city, inadvertently leading Roxas to the Cave of Wonders. Roxas later returns with Xin to investigate the cave, but are spotted by Pete, who assumes they had come to take the lamp for themselves and fights them. After Pete is defeated, he makes a getaway. Pete reappears in Neverland where he plants several empty treasure chests across the island and sells maps leading to them to Captain Hook, knowing his greed will attract the Heartless for him to collect. However, his plans are once again foiled when Roxas slays the Heartless to collect their hearts. 
Pete decides to kill two birds with one stone by leading Hook to a final, gold-filled chest, which reacts to the darkness in Hook's heart and becomes a powerful heartless that Pete hopes will defeat Roxas, though it ends up being defeated instead. Pete disappears again, vowing revenge against Roxas if they ever meet again. Kingdom Hearts 2 Pete makes his first appearance in the series in Kingdom Hearts 2, where he first encounters the main group of protagonists Euro Sora, Donald, and Goofy Euro in front of Yen Sid's tower, and is disappointed to learn that they had previously defeated Maleficent while he was out gathering Heartless. However, Maleficent is quickly resurrected, and Pete continues his duties after updating her on what occurred in her absence, traveling to other worlds to recruit old or new villains to either join their cause or to turn them into powerful Heartless, only to be foiled by Sora and Co. Each time, Pete is viewed more as a nuisance than a threat by the heroes, Sora remarking that he is not smart enough to tie his own shoes. He is nonetheless fought as a recurring boss during several portions of the game, though the strategy for beating him is different each time. Pete often incurs Maleficent's relentless annoyance and insults for his comical ineptness, despite his fierce loyalty to her. After one such incident, his yearning for going back in time to experience his wonder years as a steamboat captain again summons a portal to the past, which gives him the opportunity to put himself back in Maleficent's good graces. He goes back in time to steal his younger self steamboat and alter the past to Maleficent's liking, only to be defeated once again by Sora and Co., who have allied themselves with the younger Pete. However, Pete once again proves his worth when he brings Maleficent to the castle that never was, the headquarters of Organization 13, for them to use as a new base of operations, though he is very much aware that the Heartless will be unruly in this dark realm. In the end, he contemplates running when the castle becomes overrun with Heartless, but decides to stand by Maleficent's side to hold them off and help Sora and his friends defeat Organization 13, though the castle is destroyed. Before the final boss of the game, Pete can be fought again as a boss within the optional Hades Paradox Cup in Olympus Coliseum. Kingdom Hearts 3, Coded, Pete returns in Kingdom Hearts Coded to spy on Mickey and Disney Castle, and ends up being transported into the Dat Hascape with the King. Helping Maleficent's scheme to take over the virtual world, Pete encounters the Data Sora while helping Data Jafer and later kidnaps Data Raku, turning him into his slave through the bugs. He is later confronted at Hollow Bastion, unintentionally helping Data Sora regain his Kablade before sicking Data Riku on him. Later, Data Sora attempts to rescue him and Maleficent from digital incarnation of Sora's Heartless before it crashes them. However, Data Riku is able to rescue them through a rift in the data, and escort the villains back to their world. Kingdom Hearts 3D, Dream Drop Distance because of the increasing darkness through the worlds brought on by the eventual revival of Master Xehanort, Pete manages to bypass the protective magic of the Cornerstone of Light with Maleficent. They take Minnie hostage and send a letter to King Mickey, bringing them to a confrontation in the library of the castle. After Maleficent explains her past meeting with Xehanort, they demand the data worlds be handed over to them. However, Pete loses Minnie when Lee arrives and scares him with a trochrum. He promptly flees with his boss. Sora and Riku also battle another past incarnation of Pete, this time during his career as the corrupt captain of Princess Minnie's Royal Musketeers. He schemes to overthrow Minnie and become king himself, but his plans are foiled by the three musketeers, Mickey, Donald and Goofy, with aid from Sora and Riku. Equals Disney Think Fast equals, in Disney Think Fast. Pete appears as the final secret playable character after you've collected 30,000 points in a simple game. Equals World of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck equals, Pete in this game is the final boss, a character who owns a giant magical box and sets the challenge to any victims who fall into it to traverse surreal terrains and then to defeat him for escape. Some of the minor enemies may look a little bit like Pete as well. It all seems to be fun and games rather than true imprisonment, as in both Mickey's and Donald's final stage act before the credits, Pete can be seen in the audience enjoying the show with a mischievous grin on his face. Equals Legend of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse equals, Pete is incompetent king of the story, who passes his kingship to the laundry boy, 
Mickey and eventually fights him as a final boss to regain his throne. Equals Epic Mickey equals, Pete is featured in the Whirly game, Epic Mickey. Once again with his titular peg leg, he first appears in the Gremlin Village as Small Pete, he appears dressed as one of the Dutch girl dolls of the ride. He later appears as his usual self in Mean Street, where he informs Mickey that there are many other Petes throughout the world, each themed differently depending on the zone in the game, like appearing in a Sark outfit in Tomorrow City as Petetronic and in Ventureland as Pete Pan. Pete himself, acts as a self-appointed enforcer of sorts at Mean Street and is often a source of quests for the player. In Tomorrow City, which is inspired by Tomorrowland, the Sark-esque Petetronic is the boss of the level, attacking with thrown buckets of thinner, shaking the ground, and throwing his ID disc. The only way to attack Petetronic is to deflect his disc back at him which will stun him and expose his backside. Mickey can then squirt him with paint, which turns him blue and friendly, or thinner, which short circuits him and reduces him to an MCP-like entity. In Ventureland, Pete appears as a jolly, bubbly version of himself known as Pete Pan, named after Peter Pan, who is trapped on Skull Island until Mickey can manage to save the sprite so Pete Pan can fight off the robot version of Captain Hook like he used to. The Pete's return in the sequel, Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two, initially appearing as allies to the protagonists, Mickey and Oswald. However, by the end of the game, they leave with Prescott, presumably having plans for him. In the 3DS title Epic Mickey, Power of Illusion, three types of Pete enemies appear. The first type are thwimp-like enemies with Pete's face emblazoned on it. Mickey can use this enemy to his advantage by using a sketch of it. The second type resembles his appearance in the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. This time, Pete uses brute strength in order to fight Mickey. The third and final type uses a spike shell to attack Mickey. Mickey can only defeat him by using a spin attack and then a jump attack. Equals Disney Magical World equals, Pete is featured in the Nintendo 3DS game Disney Magical World as a character in the main city of Castleton. One of the 100 stickers required to complete the game requires the player to fulfill a request made by Pete, which results in an in-game photo of the player alongside Pete. Voice actors, Walt Disney, Billy Bletcher, John McAleish, or Ryan, Arthur Bergart, Jim Cummings. References. External links. List of Disney shorts in which Pete makes an appearance. Pete at the Index. Pete at the Internet Movie Database. Black Pete's entry in the Toonapedia.